I came to the University of Leeds in 1966 as a medical student. My father died when I was 10 and I was an only child. I qualified for a full maintenance grant because of the income at home, which was obviously quite small. The medical school in those days was a quite an old Victorian building, which is still there. They'd just pulled down a lot of old terrace houses. So between the medical school and the Brotherton Library building and the lecture theatre, there was hardly anything. It was just a rubble and uh, they were slowly building the uh, E.C. Stoner building. So one walked across a sort of wasteland <laughs> to get to the main part of the university. Somewhat unusually, I've stayed all my career in Leeds. I eventually became a consultant in gastroenterology at one of the teaching hospitals and remained a clinical academic so that I became head of the academic unit in medicine at St James's Hospital and I had a very enjoyable, I think, and uh, hopefully productive <laughs> uh, clinical and academic career and then I retired well, nearly 12 years ago now um, and since then I've tried to contribute in a number of small ways to the ongoing work of the University of Leeds because I think it's a very important institution. The medical school wanted to ask volunteers, some retired consultants, if they would be willing to deliver a series of masterclasses to junior clinical students in communication and in examining patients. So I did those masterclasses. I've remained on the editorial board of the Medicine Matters, which is a medical school magazine. I'm currently chairing the, a trust which provides facilities for the university chaplains. Last year I was a mentor for one of the final year students who had to graduate early because of the pandemic. I've been very fortunate, I've, had a, I've been in full employment, I've had a good career, I've had a very adequate salary. Uh, so I, I think it's important to try and support students that have got some financial problems, shall we say, to help them to achieve more than they might do if they were worried about having to do extra jobs. Or talking to some of them, they obviously benefit and appreciate the support that they're given by the university. I mean, I've made some donations to the scholarship fund and things while I'm alive. My wife and I recognise there'll be some capital, hopefully, to leave when we die. Sadly, we have no family of our own, so uh, it, it means that we want to, people to benefit when we're, when we're dead and buried. <laughs> when we had decided about legacies for various charities and institutions. The University of Leeds, obviously when you inform them about that, you're informed about the Brotherton Circle, which is a, a group of people that have promised to remember the University of Leeds in their wills, which sort of maintains the interest and informs people what money is used for and what legacies have been used for and how students can be supported. It provides a, a, an event once a year which um, I found quite interesting. One of the most enjoyable events was when Simon Armitage, the poet laureate, came. I'm, I'm very fond of his poetry and that was very good to just listen to him reading some of his favourite poems that he'd written. The scholarship reception uh, normally takes place in December each year and uh, members of the Brotherton Circle and people who have given to grants to scholarship funds and things get in invited and uh, the current scholars in the university who are in receipt of various grants for various different projects come along. One talks to some fascinating young people about what they're doing and their projects and how the scholarships have helped them. So to, to see students and to see how they uh, developing and how they're supported was extremely exciting and, and interesting. In a sense, of course, we've, we've been fortunate all along. <laughs> My generation, everything was provided. I was able to go to grammar school, able to go to university, and uh, grants were there, and uh, maintenance grants. To tell you the truth, I never realised that um, you had to pay fees at university. Actually, I, I was naive, wasn't I? But I, I don't think I ever realised that fees had to be paid, I, I, you know, so, so the government paid for that and there's no way I would have gone to medical school or to university, uh, we just couldn't have afforded it, you know, I'd have left school and looked for a job because that was what would have had to be.